let me create a new world. I am going to delete all of this. Create this mode later. Yes, continue. Enable cheats. Create cheats. So yes, I will create. So let me create a, a new world. Let me connect again my code connection, and I will show you. Have you have any of any of you know uh, Scratch? The the, lab, the 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 tool for kids from the MIT. So it's connected here. So you see when I create this one that I have the option to use code connection using make code scratch tinker at code .org. So Scratch is a tool from the MIT which is basically it's very similar to what we just see. It's a visual designer where you are using blocks to create to create your to create uh, some kind of flows and activity. So what I have here, and let me switch to the full view. Can you see this, or should I try to? I don't know if I can change the font here. This is crappy Minecraft font, so I hope this is good enough. But what I can do here, this is kind of an event-driven uh, designer for Minecraft. I can do something like a every time the the agent move. I'm sorry, no, not here. Every time that the, play, the, the player is walking, do something. Or every time that the player is falling, do something. Or the player is swimming in lava, do something. So this is great if you want to hack your game and never die. Because instead of dying in the lava, you can do something else. But then you have another command here, which is when the player day, uh, say something, do something, uh, teleport to some place. So, if this is kind of an event driven, even if you don't know what you're doing, you are reacting to events. So the, the first one that we do here is we say, hey, every time that someone types something, do something else. So let's do some little this. Every time that the player walk, let's do something similar like, let's drop an animal. And the animal will be dropped at the same location of the player. So what I am going to do here is, when the agent start to walk, I am going to start to drop any animal, I have chickens, crows, pigs, sheep, I have villagers, mushrooms, squids, and I have basically the, the cats and dogs version of, in Minecraft, are the ocelot, and where is the, where is the fox, and the wolf, so hey, let's make it rain wolf, every time that I am walking, I spawn an animal at this, uh, from five units in Minecraft, from scratch and then you see here that I have I can save my process so let, let's put this like uh, brain wolves and it's already on, on on mode so I'm going to go here I am going to maximize this and uh, let's see oh this is a nice world to, to work so I am walking and you see that as soon as I'm walking, it's raining dogs, which is nice to have the wolves, I'm sorry, which is nice to have this one here. And of course, I can hit the dogs because the people like to clack, 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 hit the dogs and eat the dogs. And hey, it's very, very easy. What else you can do? You can control the agent. You can say, hey, and, and I just make this, this do, this like this. I can also open here. This is kind of the, the log script of what I am doing. This is much more better. In a high resolution, if you have a big screen, you can have one to one here, see what's work, how it's working. And it's also the chance here to go, hey, this is a slow motion mode. If I enable this. Bruno? Yes? Question. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, the three parameters that are over there, zero, 050, zero. the five is the height, right? Yes, this is so kind Minecraft of, units. Yes, uh, this is my, I, I don't know the Minecraft unit, but yes, it's Minecraft unit. That's, the, <laughs> sort of, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's what I say, I do say, yes. Yeah. This is kind of east and left. Uh, the, the middle one is is the height, and this is, uh, I don't know which one is X, which one. I know that C is this one. Yeah, so, okay. decimal number, this is what we have here. But this oh, parameter, uh, yes, this is what we have. If so I put this one here in the back, I put minus three, I'm guessing, and let me stop here. I'm guessing that at this moment, uh, I can walk from, let me walk backwards. You see that they are falling. I hit something here. 
that they are falling kind of behind me. Yes. Also, there is a limit that you, of, uh, of elements that you can create here. But uh, it's fine to create this. If you want to have more, yeah, there's a lot of drugs. A lot of wolves are wolves. They are there. <laughs> you can create here. If we can change the dogs for cats. For, yes, yeah, go for cats. Also, lots. Because oh. you're breeding cats and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. I don't think I want to do this. I'm going to eat naturally. I will... This mouse is killing me, I'm sorry, I will go for the touch screen. I think I get into the point with my memory is going to die. <laughs> there it is. So I can say, okay, let's do this. Let's try cats, dogs. This one is an ocelot. Uh, let's make this one. <coughs> so right now I can start again with this one, go back here, and it's not raining the, it's not dropping the, the wolf, I don't know why, I should, oh yeah, there it is, <laughs> and it's, it's probably nice to have all of these animals here. And as I, as I told you, you have also this kind of snail here that if you enable this, is going to basically do the, the things much more slower than it usually, so you can debug and see what is happening. This one is kind of easy, so it's not going to do anything. But this is a cool thing to do. This is a cool thing to see how far you can go. So let me quit this world, start a new one. And I will show you something else. So let's create a new world. Create a mode. Yes, I know. The only thing that I need to have here in neighbor is the cheats. So there they are. I will create the world. And here, I will copy the connection. We'll connect to the server. And it will go back here to use make code. So a couple of things here. I have my project here. I had the chance to use them a lot. I have a new tutorials, a new agent moves, a new a lot of things. You have the mega jump here. So let me try to open one which is cool. This leaves a forward trail. I was I was leaving a trail of cats. This one is kind of much more nicer, but let's open this one and you will take a look of the code. Every time the player walk, place a flower at this position, then a flower at this position, then a flower at this position. So it's very easy, it's very simple to understand. Then they go back and create the agent tower. So if I type in the chat tower, I will teleport the agent to the plaza, then I will place on move and I will repeat on time to create uh, create the story obstacle to do this. The nice things about this, and this is a good example to do this, is that everything that we see here at the end of the day is <coughs> code, is plain and ugly JavaScript code. So everything that we are doing there using blocks, and kids really understand how to connect blocks, they can easily switch here to understand how they can use do the, the same things using code. And you see when I change, and by the way, this is not JavaScript, this is TypeScript, which is kind of a little better, but it's still JavaScript. Uh, but this is the thing that you have. You have an agent. The editor is good enough to say, this is the action that we have. So we have IntelliSense here. This is cool. Then I have also parameters here. So I know what I need to do. So I have another IntelliSense for the parameters. I have a lot of things and hey, if you are used to do these kind of things, 
If you are used to understand what is happening in Minecraft, you can easily read this code and see what you can do. So Bruno, they, what did you call it? Not JavaScript, but... It's TypeScript. TypeScript. Yes, okay. it's a Microsoft variation of... It's a Microsoft library on top of JavaScript, which basically adds a lot of cool features for JavaScript. The, the best one is, in JavaScript, you have no type uh, objects. In TypeScript, everything is typed. Okay. Angular is all based on, on TypeScript. And I should not know this because I don't like JavaScript. So forget me talking about JavaScript. I don't want to go there. But it's a language. It's a very simple language. And uh, hey, you see this? Let, let me open another one. I like this one, the, the Super Zamp. Uh, Mega Zamp. Mega Zamp in the blocks is on the command jump, teleport to zeros plus nada, nada. Let's go to JavaScript. And you see here also that if I play, if I type in the type jump, it will require me to do, to create, to also pass a number because you can type in the chat and also pass variables. So this is the place that you can learn how to use parameters. And then I will teleport the player to this position. So let's try to run this. Oh, there's a horse there. Yes, it's nice. It's kind of the safest horse in the world. So there, there is the player, the agent, we go here, we will press jump 50. So here I am, on the sky, on the sky. Jump five, slow, and of course, jump 250, and I am going to die in a couple of seconds. Oh, I know I am, in I am in creative mode. You can't die in creative mode. If I do this in survival mode, I can't remember which is the top high that I can do, but I will be dead like this. But hey, this is easy. And I will say, okay, player teleport, and then I will say player dot <coughs> teleport to this position, and then player dot. Let me try to say, and I can put say message or do something else. I don't want to add something here. I can boom, move the player and I can even do my, if I want to move the agent, if I want to, to do the player, I can click here and you see that I have the same options here to do the, to do the, instead of do, using blocks, I can use here <coughs> code. So I can say, hey, let's say hi, player say hi. I go back here, I go my chat window and I say jump 10. And you see here in the small chat in the bottom, I'm sorry, that you say Bruno saying hi, so you can send information to the chat window. So hey, there are a lot of things that you can do here using using code, and this is much more much more easy to, to do this. So I can create another one here. So an example, this is another one, which I like it. Player. <laughs> Let me go to Player on chat, I will say brain, I will require a function without any parameter, and I will say hey, set weather, and I can say okay, brain, because we love copy and paste, I will say tender for. Thunder. And of course, clear for clear. So once I have this, it's very easy. Rain. Oh my god. Raining. There it is, raining. Oh, sorry. Uh, Thunder. There are thunders. There are the thunders. It was clear? Oh, there. Oh! I am so anxious. It takes some time to move to one well into the other. Makes sense. <laughs> this is not the end of the world. Hey! 
you get an idea how easy it is to do these kind of things. And there are a lot of things to do here. You can uh, change the difficulty. Set the game. I, I don't see that you can change this on, on real time. But there are a lot of things that you can do. You can set up some kind of timer. So <coughs> if you want to do something, you can move from A to B. I don't know what is the XP. Ah, the speed is point, I'm sorry. And they can do what is the game rule. Hey, there are a lot of things that you can do. You can advance the time of the day, it's during the day. So hey, let's add four hours. So you are moving also close to the to the day or the time. So you can add some time here. There are a lot of things that you can do. And again, this is the positions. You have logics options here. You have a lot of things to do. And there is a full, full set of samples here. And this is a web page that you can navigate in, in the educational and Minecraft uh, main code. And as I said, you can put your agent to build the stuff. Let's forget about the blocks. Ooh, this seems to be a big one. It's a big one or something else. Oh, here it is. <coughs> Basically, this one, which is going to do, is a tutorial, which is going to give you A. Go to your agent, type this, and then we are going to do A, do B. Then an agent move, do something else. So you have also tutorial mode, but then you open one of the big ones. I didn't want to open a tutorial, I'm sorry. So B. You like zombie pigs? <laughs> you like zombies and you like pigs? You are in Minecraft? What are you going to create? Let's do zombie pig. So we have it here. There it is. Zombie pig. And we need to hit everything here. I love it. I like it. I spend some time with my kid. I try to explain him how this works. He made the ABC. He didn't get. He didn't spend a lot of time here, but he liked it. And then at the end of the day, my idea is to try to um, to try to explain him that behind all of this, this is what is uh, what is happening. And this is much more closer to what I am doing. But if you take a look at this, <coughs> this is amazing. And this is this is the same as a script. There are other options here, like an example, you can de define uh, which are the settings that you are using. I'm sorry, which are the extensions that you are using, because you can add extensions here if you are want to add some new material which is not in your Minecraft stuff and you want to use it. You can add some other stuff here. But think about programming for Minecraft. This is great, but and this is a, a, another but that the one that I say. What happened? When you want when you want to do something like this. Uh, when you want to that, when you want to have an agent we automatically build the house. You can do an agent we automatically build the house using simple scripts. The only thing that you probably need to do first is to work if you want to work if you want to build the house in a three by three space, the only thing that you need to do basically is there is no command in main code to, I'm sorry, That's right. to, to check this. So you probably need to walk there to find that there is no space, there is no one there. But building a house, maybe it's fine. What's happened with... <coughs> That's really hard. I said, building a house is fine. What happened when the house is real and it's big? It's, it's kind of very complicated to build a real house because you need to do a lot of actions. I mean, you can do a lot of action, but you can basically do something and check, do something and check. What happened to build a wall, which is much more simple. Instead of building a big house, pick up a straight line and build a wall. It's simpler. And the third one is go to survival mode, this is a scenario, and try to not to be killed. This is kind of a scenario that we started and I started to play to do and see what's happening. So I started to play around with the with Project Malmo, and it's fine, but I realized that this editor is not good enough. It's not what what I need to do. So that's where I have come here to Project Malmo. I'm sorry, I just somehow I mix my slides. This should be for this. And Project Malmo is a project created by Microsoft Research where they created a mod from Minecraft. 
and what are they the music is killing me and what are they doing what are they doing is basically they created a mod of Minecraft and they are launching this mod of Minecraft they're creating the host connection between your code editor and Minecraft and you can code using C sharp Python JavaScript and another set of language you can control almost everything there and the nice thing here is that this was created for people who are basically working in the deep tech space so there are a lot of uh, uh, I am not an expert here. I don't want to go to go even go there. Machine learning is complicated enough for me to go to deep learning. But these guys really know their stuff. So they are creating, they are working, and they are trying to get. They are creating, for example, a Minecraft maze, and they are trying to get the best uh, way to put a deep learning <coughs> network there to understand which is the best way to get out of the maze and to learn, to try, to learn, to try, to learn, to try, to learn, to try. To learn. And this is amazing. Uh, let me go back here. I want to tell to you what is happening. So you can go there. You can go to the Project Mango website. I'm going to show you how it works. You can download the application. You are going to be crazy when you download this because it's going to start Java, Python, a new set of Minecraft, a lot of things. But then at the end of the day, if you are lucky, you are going to have a full version of Minecraft, which is going to give you a set of libraries. And then you're going to be able to build your game controller and so not controller you're going to be some kind of a host which is going to connect to minecraft and it's going to interact with the world and you can even connect to a real minecraft scenario server and if you have player there you can create a smart agent there and the nice thing here it's all work starting with the host and the host is basically the one who connects your application with uh, with minecraft then when the minecraft is connected is this one using a, a similar tcp uh, TCP web socket connection, and then you need to define the mission, which is the type of mission that you want to do. I want to have a mission which is going to be up and running for 20, 120 seconds. This is the video that I have. Once I have here, I can open one of the recorded missions. And so I can put it here, or I can create a new one, or I can record my the video, the full video of what we have. And again, this is all C sharp code, very standard C sharp code. And at the end of the day, I can do a lot of things. It's not like the mission. I can take a look of what is the player looking at, and when I say what is the player looking at, I will define a 3D matrix of. Uh, you can define this of three or three or five or five. So you will say, okay, what is in my position in two, 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 two? So it's two from me, two from me here. Oh, there is nothing here. What's in the floor? It's grass. It's lava. Oh, I find lava there. I will turn right and move. There is a lot of hints here. And then you can start to see what you are, what you can do. So, because this is kind of easy to showcase, no, it's not easy to showcase. I'm not, I don't like. I like to do something else also. I also. Do you know Piper? Okay, this is Piper. Let me turn on my Piper. Uh, this is the tricky part of the demo. So my kids, not myself get this for Christmas last year, not this one, from 2016. And this is basically a full Minecraft mod uh, installed in a Raspberry Pi, which comes with these nice things. It, this is a kit started project that becomes very famous, but it comes also with <coughs> with a battery and a display. Oh my god, I think I don't have battery. Okay, maybe I'll turn this on. I, I will put this to charge. So it's come with a display, we have Minecraft here, it's all running in a Raspberry, a Raspberry P3, Pi 3, and it has a, a, a custom version of Minecraft which is designed to teach the kids how to use. So they have this crappy mouse, how to, so they are going to start with only the agent here, and the agent said, hey, I can't do anything, I need you to create a button for jump. So the way that you create a button is connect this cable, the red cable, to this pin number, and it's all a guided tutorial here in Minecraft. So what I did, I only find the place to do this. How much is that? Uh, I can't remember. Oh, okay. It should be not more than 200 or 300 dollars, because this is basically what I spend in Christmas. But this was for my kids, not for myself. This is for me. <laughs> I, I keep saying like this to, my, to get to the point that my wife is really believe me that this is for my kids. So this, as I said, <laughs> they spent a lot of time with, with Minecraft in the last couple of years and my idea was to have my Minecraft here in my machine connected to the Raspberry here 
uh, Raspberry Pi here, which is going to use the Malmo library also, and this is the one we are going to see the scenes. Because I don't have it, oh I'm sorry about that. I will use the one in, in Visual Studio. So, uh, it's going to take some time, so this is the micro that we have. Let me close this one. Okay, so Project Malmo. Let's go for Project Malmo. <coughs> there is a full set of instructions here in, in GitHub on how to install Project Malmo and the, uh, all of things that you <coughs> do. At the end of the day, when you start Project Malmo, what you're going to find is in your in one of your drives, you're going to have a custom version of of Minecraft with a lot with a lot of samples for Python, for Java, for C sharp, for C, uh, and with a lot of scripts here. And what you need to do is, I don't have here, no. You need to launch a custom, the Minecraft version from PowerShell. So, <coughs> let's go for Malmo, let's go for Minecraft. And, I'm sorry. Minecraft, and uh, let's go to launch client. And this is going to be amazing. This is the most exciting 45 seconds of the day, which is going to. That's what I have. I need to find my subject card. That is going to basically compile. Every time when you need to do the launch the client, it's going to compile the, 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 the Minecraft instance and going to launch the Minecraft. But yeah, at the end of the day, once it's, up, once it's up and running, you can create an easy program file application. Which is going, and this is a, a console application, which is going to create a, a host, and then once the host is created, oh my, I'm missing some libraries, I am going to compile the host, and then create a mission, and then after the mission, I will open the data file, I then do the mission record, I call, and I will start to do the state, world, get the state of the world, and if it doesn't have any state, I will say, hey, this is the mission it is doing, and based on what are the keys that I am pressing, I will send a command to turn to, move zero, turn to, jump, or do something like this to make it work. So I am missing a couple of references here. Malmonet, so let me find my... This is C sharp. This is C sharp, yes. Yeah. Uh, so this is I don't remember where are the, where are the, let's go for plan B, which is, oh, there it is. Oh, there, there is the Minecraft instance that we are going to use. Okay, now we have my Marmonet, and the other thing that I need to do is, I need to copy to the output. Yes, I know you didn't copy. I need to copy to the output uh, directory the the marmonet that it did. Copy here and replace. Sorry about the live fixing of stuff. I need to go here into my B. I don't know where it is trying to copy. Somehow I lost these dependencies when I copied the you know, files. I won't spend time here. Let me switch to the office examples. Mm -hmm. 
So let me clean this up a little so you can take a look what's happening here. So this is the Minecraft 1.11.2 version launched by my PowerShell suite, <coughs> which basically compiled everything here to have Java and Minecraft up and running. So the run client is here. And what I need to do right now is I need to open my piece of code Going to be somewhere here to to connect to the mission. So let me open my program. And it's taking all of my resources here. Yes, I know, I know. Um, I will put some breakpoints here so we can see this in real life. Let me. I hope I compile this one. Let me launch this, and you can see the, the step by step. Ah, of, co of course, yes. I, I need to have my console application also here. So. Some code, start mission, so when I said start mission, it's going to connect to, to Minecraft. You see that Minecraft is changing in the back. It's loading the world, and then what else I can do here is I can write. So it's going to spend some time until the, the world is, is finished, and let me put a step here and let's focus on this one. So this is my Minecraft world. I'm sorry for it being so small, but somewhere here it's created a fault instance, so this is kind of too small, but this is the Minecraft there. Then what it's going to do is going to random moving the randomly going to move the agent. So when I when you see that I send the send command move one, Minecraft should move. It's not moving. You need to love it. Okay. Same good to Twitter. Let me run this again. So Minecraft. is ready okay now it's moving so as you see there I can change and I can take a look of what is happening I can do a lot of things that's it it's very simple it's just moving but this is the, the thing that you can do and what I have here created in the, in the other samples I hope I can this is not this is something I should, not this one This one. What I created here is another one, and I hope I can build it, which basically connect to the to the Minecraft and and also I have a couple of options here in the window form to say hey what I want to do. And I'm taking a picture of every one of the every one of the view of, of what I have here in Minecraft and I am and I am analyzing this this one. So Let's open and let's wait until this one's open. It's working. It seems that it's not doing anything, but it's trying to load, load the project. There it is. Okay, again, I need my. I need to 
copy here the... okay so this one is a little more tricky than the other one this one what this does is it's going to launch a windows form app and I have here add a couple of missions let me go for maze I will run it and yes I know and it will load the wall with the maze and it will automatically try to escape from the maze okay there is the maze and you see here this is the image that I am seeing in real time and I am taking an analysis of what I am seeing I am taking I am looking at dirt or see here that this is the scene that I am doing the distance they have this is dirt so if I didn't you see that this is a countdown here okay so my main solver is not smart get the stocks there <laughs> I'm sorry about that I can't remember what I did but you should try to you know how is the, the way to you can escape from uh, escape from maze you always turn right so you get here or left you need to choose one of the, the sides turn left and go there turn left and go there turn left and until you get to the point that you can advance so go back and the first time that you can turn left again so with this and then 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 at some moment you are going to be dead or get out of the maze in this case i don't know why i get stuck here but i put this one in the in the code very pretty wall yeah. <laughs> yes i don't know <laughs> i am i can't control this one so let me launch another one <coughs> but i hope that you get that, the idea also that the application is in bright mode yes i know uh, continue uh, other thing which is crazy here is that because i'm using web socket web socket between these two uh, you get these crazy states where nothing works all the time so you need to to have some patience go to the touch manager and start to kill <laughs> hey this is windows so we know this stuff yes no i was going to say 30 years ago principles one i think everybody wrote a base software but now you can do it with 3d ah, isn't it? Right. yes that's that's the idea so let me launch this again let me go for another one like the avoid the lava it's connecting no it's closed i think i lost connection between these two let's go for the fourth one it's not working anymore i like it when this happened <laughs> so hey <laughs> let me try one more time i know that this is going to be the tricky part Let me launch directly the file. No, it's closing. Oh my god. And just in case I will launch again. My amazing Minecraft file. And even if Minecraft is very low powered. Uh, tool and it doesn't uh, eat up a lot of resources when you are putting all of the pieces together you need to have some kind of not a powerful machine but uh, a good one so let me try to save some resources here but also so PowerShell is launching Minecraft again We wait and let me show you the code. By the way, everything that I am showing you right now is open source. You can go to Malmo in GitHub and you can download all of the code that is, or even the mods for the mods for Microsoft, everything that you have in there. So my maze solver or my, so an example, my avoid, avoid the lava, you will be going to see that it's very easy. The only thing that I do here 
in the main loop, every, every half a second, I am going to get the state of the world. I am trying to get an observation object. With the observation is basically, I can see what's happening around me. I will say that my floor is three for three. If I can get something, I will check in the positions one, four, and seven, which are in front of me. Because, uh, of course, if you are going to create a matrix, the nine dots matrix, you are not going to say one, two, three, four, five, six. You are going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, four, and seven are the three in front of you. And if they are lava, if they are not lava, you are going to move. If they are lava, you are going to see where you found it and you are going to turn in one direction. I can do this, so it's easy. So this is the kind of things. And I, I didn't open the, the ones that you have in Python with all of the deep learning stuff. But this guy, what are, this is very easy to understand. But in the in the <coughs> in the Python, where you have the deep learning scenarios, what they are doing instead of doing this is here, they have the, the machine learning entity there, where they are feeding all of the information and giving the, the right answer. And that's how they are taking. Uh, options because they are taking the decision there. So this is still complete. Minecraft, hey, my Minecraft is here up and running. Timing is great. So here in my Minecraft instance is going to use almost two gigabytes because you know. Big pixels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think that is not going to be all in the graphics <laughs> card, but somehow it takes a lot of. Okay, there it is. So I will launch this again one more time. Let me minimize this. Let me put this one here. And we avoid the lava, run. Like this. <coughs> Okay, again, okay. same scenario. I hope we will find lava somewhere. Yes. It was very easy, very easy to understand. Also, I am creating this model from scratch, and there is a full set of how you can create this based on an XML file with the definition of the, of the environment. And this is something easy as hey, create the lava, something like this. This is basically all of the definition of the environment of the mission is an XML file, which is this. This is a kind of a silly, uh, small version of the market gate, where you say, hey, this is my start time, this is the weather, this is, I am going to be able to span again animals or not, this is my world, this is going to be a flat world generator. This seems to be crazy, but this is creating a world using some lava inside of them. And there are places where you can go online, they find what you have, yes, and have it there. And then I will do some decorations, I will add some lava elements there. This is my full lava world in the, in the below. And this is the agent that I am using, named Christina. And this is the place, this is the video that I am going to use. Small resolution, 320, 240. This is what I am going to observe. Three book for free. I can go for five, for five, five times five, uh, ten by ten, depending on what you want. But hey, it's very easy to, to understand. Can you uh, create uh, programmatically a dog? Yes. I don't know. I can't remember how, but yeah, you can create animals. Because you, you, can, you can create entities, and the entities are small pieces of uh, materials lava floor water or you can create entity like a dog a pig or something like this but this is xml like initial world uh, state ah you mean here in the xml no uh, do you want to create uh, animals up from the beginning or do you want to create animals no, while from the I, let's say while i'm walking yeah i want to add to the scene yes you other you actors it. or uh, you, can, yeah. you can do it i think I, this one is it this is the pig no, i'm sorry this is the pig I think the video when I create animals. Let me. No, this is not the one. I am basically 
analyzing the image here and put it in front of me would like up. But yes, you, you, you can create animal from the, oh. <coughs> from, the from here. So I am I don't have any more time. I will be try to happy to, to show you all of this. I will leave the slides. I will share the codes and I will share everything to, between to, tomorrow and <coughs> and Friday in, in my blog. Everything. In, uh, So you can see there that I, I can also get the the image and the picture of the of the user, so I can analyze this using some kind of deep learning to see what is in front of me, what is the decision I need to do. But right now I, I am breaking my machine. I am going, as I said, I am going to put everything in my blog, elbruno.com. You can follow me on Twitter or at elbruno. Uh, sorry for the missing and for the last part. Uh, this is the tricky part. I told to Arlan that. The last demos are the crappy one. Even, oh, Minecraft, like, <laughs> stop, Minecraft, please. Even playing with the make code, which is uh, free and you can download and play around, I'm sure that you are going to have some fun time. So QA time, draw time. I know that we have some amazing presents here, so <laughs> all back to you. And if you want in the meantime, if you are you preparing anything, everything, I will answer some questions. Sure, if anyone has questions for Bruno, this is a great time. <coughs> I've seen on the, that deep learning uh, slide you have, uh, I've seen an area HTM, that's a hierarchical temporary memory, like yes. that's a different approach to machine learning. Okay. So that looks like uh, interesting uh, stuff to play with. If you want, oops, what we can do next time. I can bring one of my colleagues, the one who really, who really knows deep learning and machine learning, and they can they can share with, with you what are they doing here when we are playing with Minecraft and doing these models. Because what we are mostly using Minecraft, uh, not at work, but the fun stuff, yeah. is they want to try try some of their models. Not, yeah. Nothing much more complicated than that. But yes, uh, I am not an expert and I don't want to be an expert on machine learning. Even if there are a lot of money there, if you want to go there, that's an amazing place. There are a lot of jobs there. And by the way, I can't remember your name, but in my company we are always looking for people. So feel free to contact me later and I will contact you by via LinkedIn or something like this and we will happy to put your name in the, in the list. I was just checking out your blog. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you will find me in, in, in a couple of places. Yeah. So, do, do, so a lot of the applications for those things, like you've seen like the robot, um, soccer competitions, but now this can be done virtually yes. with something like this. Is that part of the idea is that they can go they can go virtual instead of being so mechanical or physical world, which can be an impediment to actually do the the AI is to be honest with you, and this is my point of view, my colleagues will say something different. I find it most useful in teaching programming skills to kids because they love Minecraft that in a in pure AI scenarios. But, this is again another big but, my colleagues, the AI experts, are crazy about this. Because they, 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 I don't know how, they see Minecraft as a tool where they can start to, to test their models. Right. So I don't know if you, as you said, we have seen, we see this sumo competition, the soccer competition between bots, even the battle of what is there. But these guys are thinking in a different level. Say, hey, we can put here some real people and this other thing and these uh, virtual agents to interact with each other to see how they are working, what they are doing. I don't know. And to be honest with you, these guys told me that they, before doing with Minecraft, they were doing these kind of things in StarCraft. And I'm sorry, in World of, World of Warcraft. Because there are a lot of bots there. <laughs> there are a lot of intelligence there. So I, it's, a new, it's an amazing world. It's, it's, it's a crazy world. To, to go like this, and uh, lucky for me, I can go in something simple like typing TypeScript to, <laughs> to make it rain, wolf, and cats. Mm -hmm. This is the, the, the key thing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bruno.